Okay, the lab we are doing today is called Chalk It Up, and we're actually going to use some chalk, which is uh, carb uh, calcium carbonate, and uh, its chemical formula is CaCO3, which means it has calcium, the Ca, carbon, which is the C, and oxygen, which is the O. Uh, if you notice, every one of these, uh, um, this compound has three separate atoms, and there are three parts oxygen. That's what the little three is going to stand for when you have CO3, okay? So that little O means that the three next to it means there are three atoms in that. The calcium is just one atom, the carbon is one atom, and then there's three parts oxygen uh, in with that compound. Of course, that's only four or five atoms, so they're really too small to see. They're way, way too small to see. But when you get a piece of chalk, that means there's millions and millions of those atoms together, and that's why we can see them at that point. Uh, anyway, we're going to look at how to use the triple beam balance, how to calibrate it, get it all set up to use, and how we're going to use uh, the triple beam balance along with a weigh boat to get the correct measurement of the mass of that chalk. We're also going to use uh, club soda, which is H2CO3, which means it has H2, which means two parts uh, or two atoms of hydrogen. C, there's no number next to it, so that tells me there's one atom of carbon. And then O3, which is three atoms of oxygen. So we have three, four, we have six total uh, atoms that make up one molecule uh, of, of that substance, of that, of that compound. And so uh, this is club soda. Then we also have water. Most everybody knows that water is H2O, two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. And then we're going to use some graduated cylinders today, and we're going to use a mortar and pistol uh, to crush our chalk up today. Okay? So I'm going to pause the video for just a second so I can readjust my camera, and then uh, we're going to zoom up a little bit on some of these substances, and we're going to use the triple beam balance and see how to calibrate that. Okay? Okay, if you notice right here, our lines are not lining up on the uh, zero mark. And everything here is put on zero, so we should actually have our balance zeroed out at this moment. But it's not there yet. But underneath, the, uh, underneath this pan right here, on this side, there is an adjustment. It's like a little screw that you can screw in or screw out. And if I notice, I need some more weight or mass on this side to pull this end up. So what I'm going to do is unscrew the calibration knob to kind of get it to level out. So I'm going to unscrew it a little bit and let it sit for a minute and see if that does it. Not quite there. I need to unscrew it some more. And there we go. We're, we're zeroed out. Now sometimes that's not enough. There's little screws right here on the end. If that knob is all the way in or out, whichever it happens to be, sometimes I may have to adjust these two little screws at the front with a screwdriver to get it to calibrate where it zeroes out. Now that my instrument is calibrated, now what I want to do is figure out how much this weigh boat weighs right now. And so I'm going to put it on the scale, and I'm going to go ahead and move my uh, smaller mass until I get it to zero out. Okay, so when I look right here at my scale, the reading shows to be 2.4 grams. So 2.4 grams is how much this weighs. This weigh boat weighs 2.4 grams. Now I want to get 5 grams of calcium carbonate, okay? So I want to add 5 to that. So 5 plus 2 is 7, but I also have to do the 0.4. So I'm going to move my scale to 7.4. And when I finally get 5 grams of chalk in here, calcium carbonate, then I have what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and take some chalk out of my container here. And I'm going to put it in my mortar and pistol. And I've actually got some already crushed up, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you what I did. Was I took the piece of chalk and I kind of broke it up a little bit before I put it in there. It's about as small as that's going to get. I'm going to crush up a little bit more and put it in there. And so what I do is I just kind of take that mortar and pistol and I just kind of start grinding it up. This is kind of a bad surface. So I'm going to pause the video, get that ground up, and then I will uh, bring it back now. You can just sit there and move this side to side to get it ground up too, to get it to a fine powder. So I'm going to pause that, and then by the time I come back, this will be all ready to go, okay? Okay, remember, anytime we're using chemicals, we want to make sure we're wearing our safety goggles, okay? And so what I want to do now is I want to take the 5 grams of chalk dust that I have, and I want to pour it into this bag labeled water, okay? 
there it is. And now then, I'm going to measure out 5 milliliters of water, or I'm sorry, 10 milliliters, right here to this point right here. And remember when we do use a graduated cylinder, we want to make sure that our curve of our water or liquid, whatever we're using, is the bottom of that curve is what we read, okay? So I want to make sure the bottom of the curve of the water hits this 10 milliliter line, okay? And I want to make sure I do it on a flat surface. Okay. Now, my water is clear as you expect. It really doesn't have a smell. And I'm not going to taste it in here. But I also want to look at my uh, substance before it mixes, okay? I know that the chalk is powdery, it's dry. It's very soft texture, you know, it's very, it's almost like talcum powder. Um, it's white. It does have a slight smell to it, um, a chalky smell, I guess that's what you would call it, because probably most people know what chalk kind of smells like. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to mix the 10 milliliters of water with that, or 10 milliliters of water into the bag, and I'm going to seal it up pretty quick. Okay? And I'm going to let it uh, mix up. I'm going to mix it up with my hands right here on the outside. Okay? And I'm going to notice any observations. Okay? Okay, it's mixing pretty good with the water. It's gray. It's grayer than it was when we started. Okay? Um, couldn't really notice much of a temperature change by feeling it. It feels maybe just a slight bit colder. But other than that, I'm not seeing much. But it does seem to mix pretty well. I don't see any real bubbles, per se, other than me just kind of mixing it up. I kind of got some bubbles that way. But I'm not seeing anything in that really reacting that I notice. Okay. Now I'm going to pause the video just one more time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get five more. Well, I think I have enough powder here. Let's go ahead and do it. So I know that the scale is still measured out to the right amount. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, 10 milliliters. I'm sorry, 5 grams of this of more chalk. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and weigh that out. Almost there. Okay, so a little bit much. Let me get some back out. Okay, so I'm trying to do everything the same between both experiments so that we can get it figured out if anything changed, okay? So now what I want to do is measure out in a different graduated cylinder because I don't want to contaminate uh, the club soda, which is H2CO3, I don't want to contaminate it with the water. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that out. And the volume's got to come up higher because the tube is thinner. I put a little bit too much in there. And I'm pouring it back in here because this is not the original container, okay? And so these two things are being swapped back and forth today. They were both clean when I started. So I won't be pouring the excess back in the original container. It's actually safe to pour down the sink when we're done today. Okay, this is a little bit harder. If I had a, a pipette or a medicine dropper, it might go a little bit easier. That might have done it. Okay, that's 10 milliliters exactly. So I have another bag that's labeled club soda. So I'm going to take the uh, chalk dust that I have here now, chalk powder, pour it in there. Okay, remember that's uh, calcium carbonate. And I'm going to mix the club soda in with it. And I'm going to seal it up and do the same thing. Okay, so now I'm going to mix it up. It feels like to me that the temperature went cooler than this one. So, I'm not noticing much else. I do see some more bubbles than I saw in the previous one, I believe. So, to me, there's some evidence of some chemical reaction going on here. That maybe that uh, extra little bit of stuff in there is reacting to the chalk powder. And so I feel a slight temperature change is going down. And a, and a lower temperature change means that it's taking in energy more so than what it's giving off. And so we call that a endothermic reaction when it gets a little bit cooler. Okay, and so as far as the textures, both of them, to me, when I put them side by side, they look about the same. They look like they mix the same. This one does have more bubbles in it than this one does. When I look at them side by side, 
So, some differences there, okay? I don't feel any air in the bag as far as it airing up, so it really didn't give off a whole lot of gas unless I just didn't seal it up well and it didn't. So I, I could try this experiment a few more times and see what changes, but as it is right now, I didn't see much gas giving off, maybe a little bit, but uh, this one seemed to have gotten a little bit colder, okay? I hope that helps you out with this observation lab. It's our first lab of this year, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the lab as you worked on it. And uh, if you need to review anything, feel free to watch this video again. Uh, there will be quite a few labs in six weeks, so make sure you wear your safety goggles. Uh, in certain situations, we'll have aprons on uh, when it looks like it's going to cause problems with us getting a, um, you know, causing a mess or if there's a possibility of a chemical landing on us that we really don't want there. Uh, we'll use those as well. Uh, for you ladies, make sure you tie back your hair, and everybody needs to make sure you wear closed-toed shoes, no sandals or flip-flops, okay? All right, so uh, keep up with my YouTube channel this six weeks. I uh, hope that it helps you out, and especially when we're taking quizzes and tests, great way to keep caught up, okay? All right, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Come on. To make your future unfold And put aside what's killing your growth You know what's best for you, so let's go Holla back, if you really feel me Holla back now, if you were with me No time to waste, the clock is ticking Enough wishing, the world's out of commission <laughs> Ain't no superstition No need to make your own prediction Your destiny is in your possession How bad you